Welcome to Talkin' Tigers. I'm Rachel Whitaker. Monday, we looked back at LSU's tough Kentucky series. So today, let's look ahead with LSU beat writer Randy Rosetta. Hey Randy, how's it going? Hey Rachel, how are you doing? Doing just fine in the spirit of Easter coming up this weekend and LSU definitely wanting to get back on track tonight against ULL in a special game remembering former player Wally Pontiff. But what does LSU have to do tonight to get back on track? Well, that's kind of the beauty of baseball. They really don't have to do much except put their uniform on and go out and play the game. You don't get to think about it much in baseball. It's not like the other sports where there's three or four or five days. Usually there's just a day or two at the most. You get back out there and you it's kind of like a hangover cure. You get out there and you get to get your blood going and see what you can do again. So there are no drastic changes needed. They just need to tighten up a little bit is not a young inexperienced team you're talking about a lot of juniors and seniors uh, sophomores who have played a lot so they'll be fine they'll get back out there to night against ULL I think you'll see a much crisper game if they make mistakes it'll be because they're young players not because they haven't kind of hashed through what they did against Kentucky Right, Paul Maneri maintains the sky is not falling in Baton Rouge, and you're right, they definitely have some veterans who can who can kind of take the lead here and against their in-state rival coming up tonight. And here's Paul Maneri on facing the Cajuns and their coach, Tony Robichaux. They, they, they've done a tremendous job over there, and I personally like those guys too. I, I know that probably rubs some people the wrong way that we actually get along, <laughs> that we don't have to hate each other, all right? Because we don't. At least I can tell you from this side, we don't. We, uh, you know, I have great respect, and Tony won his 1,000th game earlier this year. I was maybe his first text message to congratulate him. Um, you know, it's a, it's a game I look forward to. Our team looks forward to. I'm sure they look forward to. Always nice to see coaches getting along, but outfielder Jake Fraley will miss Tuesday night's game with a strained hamstring, Maneri said. But, Randy, on the mound, Kyle Bowman will get another midweek start. So your thoughts on his progress this season? Well, it, as much as any pitcher I can remember, he's a kid who has to start. He doesn't do well coming out of the bullpen. I'm not sure why that is. He doesn't have overpowering stuff. He doesn't throw real hard. He can get out. He was very effective as a starter last season. If he can throw sinkers, if he can get ahead in counts, he can be an effective pitcher. And I don't know why that doesn't translate to him coming out of the bullpen, but it just hasn't. When he started, he's been okay. This will be his second start. In his first one, he went four innings against Stephen F. Austin, gave up, I think, three or four hits in a run, and put the Tigers in good position to win. So I think pulmonary and Alan Dunn want to give him another chance to see if he can maybe carve that spot as the midweek guy and the number four guy when the postseason gets here. They have At some point, you have to have that guy you can rely on. They've got three guys now on the weekend. They need a fourth one they can rely on down the road. It's either going to be Bowman or Russell Reynolds, most likely, because I think Doug Norman just wasn't quite ready for the moment yet. Right, and Paul indicated that Russell Reynolds could come on in relief of Kyle Bowman tonight. So we'll watch and see what those two guys can do against ULL, a game at Zephyr Field. So that'll be exciting for New Orleanians to come out at 7 p.m. first pitch. Well, Randy, thanks a lot. Enjoy the night. All right. Thanks for having me, Rachel. And thank you, as always, for watching Talking Tigers. See you Wednesday.